we open up in the waiting waiting room of Rumpling Castle. The waiting room isn't exactly full. The most of the interviewees have passed and gone. All that remains after a long day are three more figures waiting for their turn and their opportunity to potentially make it on the crew of the Chromatic Queen. The captain of the Chromatic Queen will be Prince Kalupi, along first mated by Sil. Three figures wait in the room. One, two medium-sized creatures, one human, a medium dragon, and a large figure. This figure is... Well, I'll let the figure describe itself. Sitting against one wall, cloaked and chained, is a large, bulbous, fat, gray-scaled figure with burning, deep eyes, um, almost alight with a red, malevolent glow. Um, you notice his arms and legs and body are held in thick chains. But he sits there proudly. I slipped into Rizzer because that's my natural storyteller voice nowadays. Um, sits there proudly underneath the heavy cloak. You see what appears to be a finely tailored suit. Um, golden and silver filigree peeking out where visible. And he would be staring at the other two occupants of the room. The other occupant sitting in the opposite corner of this large amphibious figure ch that's chained up is a dragon. And not just any kind of dragon. Dragons are fairly common among the Indigo Isles. Unlike the rest of Galarian, where dragons would be considered a rare sighting, on the Indigo Isles, dragons are fairly common. But this particular dragon is a bit of a different heritage. And, well, again, let's have the dragon describe themselves. Yeah, so in that corner of the room, you see a a draconic figure who's currently wearing some uh, what look to be charred priest robes that uh, they happen to find and put on after shrinking down to the size that they currently are. Um, the scale pattern that you see on this dragon is black like onyx, but in between each scale, a glowing red orange magma-like substance is flowing between those scales emulating like he is a lava flow with obsidian platforms that are going all across his body he looks like he wants to be anywhere other than here and in fact he uh, seems to keep on muttering to himself can't believe they took my wings god I gotta get back at this somehow. And he doesn't really acknowledge the figure staring at him, but he knows that he's being looked at and he's making it a point to very arrogantly like pretend like nothing's happened as if they are the most powerful thing in this room at any point and is more than willing to prove it if challenged. And amongst these two rather... Um, penisy individuals trying to be the cockiest of the cocky because like Han Solo says don't get penisy kid is an individual that we've known and we've we've seen before this is our friend Timothy who unsuccessfully finding jobs throughout Gold Crop Island has decided for one last shot, maybe, just maybe, the Chromatic Queen might be his opportunity. And 
what's Timothy doing between these two individuals? So as the scene is playing out, you see this gentleman take a swig of a whiskey bottle that he acquired. Does No one needs to know how he was able to get his hands on it. He looks to be middle aging. He's got salt and pepper hair and his vibrant blue eyes are keeping a close watch on the two of the beings here. But he looks very relaxed, very nonchalant. In fact, almost like he's watching a show and he is seeing just what's about to happen because his money is on a fist fight potentially breaking out had it not been for the chains and whatnot. I think he even clears his throat and he says, well, uh, nice to meet you guys, I guess, if we're just going to be here sitting here with our thumbs up our ass. All right, then. I see you've got something in the flask. Give me a little sip, why don't you? I'm, I'm parched. Timothy looks to his his nice little bottle of whiskey. He's like, you a fan of whiskey? Because that's what I got working with here, man. Uh, just uh, f- feed it to me. And he'll like open his mouth, <laughs> which you'll notice is much, much larger than an average humanoid and kind of hinges at the wide points opening into kind of a sack underneath much like a a toad um, if I'm going to be exact but instead of like most toads he's got probably from what you can quickly see four to five rows of razor sharp pointed teeth all right come on come on a little sip I won't bite you and at this point the guard kind of tugs at the large figure's chains says, all Oi. right. Oi, I'm not doing anything wrong. And then we cut to beyond the door. We see Prince Kalupi bedecked in his finest robes. And we see Syl. How, how does Syl look? It's It's been... It's been about a month since we last left So, how, how do they look at this point? Any difference? Anything changed? Yeah, I mean, they're probably cleaner than the last time, considering they haven't been traveling around, you know, the wilderness. But definitely not decked out, you know. Same clothes, same armor. Uh, not, not too different in appearance, at least. Perhaps a little uh, moodier, you know, sulky pair of goggles on their forehead you know they they may or may not have stolen a pair of goggles uh been gifted from Juan uh we'll go with (laughs) gifted so yeah they're you know probably not wearing them right now no need for for extra perception but yeah pair of goggles I can see I can see Syl as a around the neck kind of person yeah exactly uh so they're there there's you know perhaps some other items uh fancy scarf uh, that Rizzer once wore. I don't think anyone else had anything that Syl would have taken, but... The prince turns to Syl. So, I think we've... run through most of our list. And... we filled all but... He quickly looks down the sheet of parchment. We filled all but... three positions... Three is all we need, at least the minimum, to crew the Chromatic Queen. And have you have you found suitable replacements for your traveling companions? I don't want to leave you empty-handed, by all means. If well, I mean I have my mission that I'm that I'm joining along. You know, political discussions aside, with the with the Orpox of Bluebell, but. You have yours, and we don't need to get into that now. We, I know, we know, I know what your true mission is. You know what your true mission is. But I don't know. Have you found anybody suitable? I mean, you're 
people put together a great list. There's a lot of capable sailors, but they maybe they're just not used to looking for you know adventurer types. We haven't we haven't really found anyone that can I mean to put it bluntly keep me alive. Uh, you know once we get where we're going. Well, I do know that the next the last few are well long shot would be putting it mildly there's this and he says it kind of with a shiver because humans are very rare on these islands Ugh, this human who seems to well let's just say that uh, he's a bit he's a bit of a beggar uh, let's put it quite plainly unable to find any good work and I don't know I don't know if he has any talent whatsoever but maybe you can see something and the other one's a criminal and the dragon well dragon's a priest of some sort I think it's one of the priests from from the mainland I don't know how exactly a dragon got to worshipping a goddess of the mainland I think Sister Cinder is something is what you call it at least in one area I wouldn't know I haven't well I I don't remember the mainland but well how about you how about you go bring one of them in we'll do we'll see so we'll walk out open the door and you know list in hand and take in this scene of you know oozing and glaring and just kind of roll their eyes. Uh, let's see. We want to talk to uh, Timothy. Timothy Bono. Is that one of you? It's, it's Bono. I've Bono. been Bono a lot. It's fine. He gets up and adjusts his jacket as he looks to the other two. And he makes direct eye contact with, uh, with Zaba and takes another swig of whiskey as he walks on in. <laughs> I'll be seeing you, kid. I'm like 41, but yeah, sure. Hmm. He's correct, you are just a child. All right, you guys can actually go fuck yourselves. Sorry, didn't mean to swear in front of you. I don't care if you do, but you know, the prince is waiting if you want to Join us in here. I mean, if you just want to stay here and argue, no, that's no, no. fine too. But by all means, let's go in. And so we'll, you know, let Timothy walk in first. Uh-huh. Take one last look at these two hulking <laughs> figures before closing the door. Well, Mr. Bono, welcome. I've had the, I don't know if I should call it pleasure or not of hearing all about you from our fair citizens on, in Rumplank. I do hope that you can find what you're looking for in this in this adventure, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. So what what, pray tell, brought you to apply to the member of the Chromatic Queen. Timothy kind of like, I think when he walked into the room, by the way, he made like a flourish and a bow towards the prince because it's him. He's extra. And he sits on over to his seat. He does the, you know, whenever like you're, <laughs> whenever you can't get into a chair, right? He like shifts around a little bit. He has like one leg up, relaxed. He's very nonchalant, takes another sig of the whiskey. Uh, and as he's like getting things mentioned to him, he's like nodding around, like, "Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I know, right? That sucks, suck, huh?" Look, full transparency. I need the work, man. I, I kind of running low on funds, as uh, we like to say here in the begging business. <laughs> I see. Well. We do have quite our fair share of panhandlers and rum plank. I, as unfortunate as that may be, but I, 
you do have to ask, if you do happen to find yourself on the Chromatic Queen, what sort of skills could you provide to the crew? I mean, I can provide a bunch of skills, I'd say. Talking off your ears enough, that's bestly one of them. We'll say, pretty good at killing it when it comes to it. Not the best, but like if, you know, things happen, a fight breaks out. What did you, what do you normally do to get money? You just beg? What, no. How do you normally no, get no, income? No. I, a little embarrassing, I kind of woke up here. No clue of how I got here. Before, back uh, when I, where I lived, I helped take care of fun, uh, he, like, thinks for a second as he's going to say his things. And he, like, laughs a little bit. Just fun, quirky things people wouldn't necessarily want to deal with. Let's just say it that way. That's not overly descriptive. Perhaps talking isn't? Isn't maybe well, your strong suit? Ex- hold I mean, it's okay. No. what? It normally freaks out people, what I do. I like to hunt for... Spirits. Hunt for spirits. Like like dead things? Yes. That was how I got the money paid. Oh. Things like that. Good, because I was assuming with that bottle you meant booze. With- no. <laughs> no. This helps deal with them as well. And he takes another swig. <laughs> I mean, we are known for old Woody in this town. So... Wouldn't have surprised me if that's the reason you're here, but... Well, this trip won't be... Won't be heading... Won't be staying for very much longer upon Gold Crop. We do plan to sail the Isles. And our first stop will be Bluebell. Where we would need somebody with the ability to, as you say, talk somebody's ear off. Because the Orpox are known to be quite quite the talkers. You wouldn't know it by speaking with Master Olo mm. upon the beach, but the Orpox you'll meet in Bluebell will they'll talk your ear off. So somebody who can who can talk their ear off would be beneficial. And I'd love to do that by all means. Like I said, I, and he like has a moment where he's not looking as confident and doesn't have his charismatic smile. He looks to you, Sylvan says, I, I do genuinely need the money. I mean, I know, obviously begging doesn't help at all. Doesn't look good for me, but got nothing against beggars. We all do what we need to to survive. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I need to get back home. <laughs> Where's home? Not exactly where I live. Timothy just uh, like looks a little bit and says, uh, it's Taldor. That's where I'm from. That's far. I, it's, yeah. it's pretty far. Which is why I'm trying to scrounge up money where I can. Who else have you met here? I mean, you've been looking for work. Anyone else approach you? Quite a few people. I mean, I tried for a lot of jobs. I mean, I really tried. Like, Timothy's trying to think in his, like, somewhat drunken haze some of the names of people that he has gotten to talk to. So, yeah, Timothy looks like, yeah. (laughs) Would you believe it? I tried joining the Iron Eels for a little bit, but just missed my opportunity. They were all kind of dead when I found them. Almost got accused. That was pretty cool. Happens. Yeah. Uh, I also it, tried to find Coranda too, but that fell through. She's also deceased. Sad to say. Um, You're doing many chance or not? Nah? No, nah, I, okay. I wouldn't. Um, I avoid killing things. I mean, if if you like killing things, that's. Useful, I mean, d- but... who likes killing things, right? You have to be fucking psychotic. But I mean, if worse comes to worse, like, you know, I guess I'll have to. How can we know that you will be loyal to our mission? Considering that, you know, by your own admission, you've been, you know, 
up for sale, so to speak. Timothy straightens up, and in fact, I think he actually gets up and holds out his hand. A handshake. I know it's nothing much, but I don't normally like to mess around. The only reason why I've been struggling to find work is because I haven't gotten the chance to do the work. Once I actually do it, I'm there for the long run. I'm there to be a, essentially a ride or die. So if you do hire me on, I'll be your ride or die. Now, when it comes to anything else, like romantic-wise, anything else like that, that's whatever the hell you want to do with your own free time. But at least for me, I would love to work with someone like you. The prince's eyebrows kind of raise for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't need to know about your romantic life. That's okay. That's right. Yeah. So we'll shake the hand and then, you know. Mm-hmm. Fade off and let the prince handle this now. <laughs> well, Mr. Bono, thank you for coming. I think we have everything we need, and my assistant, when you when you depart, has your contact information, and you should get a missive from us at your. It looks like you're staying at a tavern. Okay. Well, she gives a missive for us at that tavern. Which tavern, Prince? The Gutted Snake. Huh. Not exactly the most respectable place, but uh, you should hear from us there. I or not. I mean... That's fair. Honestly, we'll that's super fair. And Timothy just gets up, does a bow once again, and says, thank you both for your time. And I'll see myself out, I guess. And Timothy walks off. I mean, he's not worse than Juan, so... (laughs) Well, let's just say that at least he didn't try to hit on my sister. (laughs) It's sad that that's where the bar is, but... She was 13. He's yucky, my guy. We didn't know. <laughs> I don't think she's actually 13. I think she's older than that. But that's I, I the the group decided she was 13. The princess yeah, a... looks like she's like seven years old based on the art. Yeah. She, was she a... is but a wee child. Uh, just I'm... a hatchling. I was about to say something. Very glad I didn't. Thank God. All right. I'm going to. Yeah. Timothy. Timothy leaves. He goes away, back to the tavern. If you take a sip of your if does Timothy pass through the same waiting room that we're sitting yeah, in? Yeah, he absolutely would. Looks to you all and says, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Good fucking luck to both of you. Holy shit. Yeah. They were n- all business. No, nothing else about them. Yeah, good luck to both of you. Takes another swig. I enjoy the rest of your drink, kid. Um, I'm just going to kind of let my essence radiate a little bit and see if I can't uh, let my sin corrupt that alcohol a little bit here. Just befoul it. I don't hey, like being told to is? fuck myself. Hey, you do that? Timothy <laughs> finishes the entire bottle as he stares at you dead on. And yeah. lets out a burp. And he says, thanks You'll for spiking it. You'll and feel leaves. it later. <laughs> I like this one. They've got fire. The little one. I suppose so. I, there's no one else in this room, is there? I wasn't sure if you were speaking to yourself. Dragons. They're haughty. Self-absorbed. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Wouldn't go that far. But you are (sighs) correct on counts one and two. Well, at least you're self-aware, I guess. Regrettably. Suppose at this point, so would be walking back out. Next, we want Vesuviac. Raise an eyebrow a little bit. The Molten. You have a title? Well, uh, 
more I had a title, but I imagine that that doesn't go away with time. Vesuviak is correct, and he stands up and looks to you. <laughs> you can come in, you know, step aside so you can walk through the door. He walks in. It doesn't really do much of uh, anything extra. He just walks in, chest puffed out, neck kind of craned up a little bit as he's looking around everything, trying to make himself just look as big and as just as uh, trying to get as big of a room presence as he can. <laughs> is is Vesuviak a medium or small dragon? Medium. Okay. Does so he walk on? Does he walk bipedal, big. bipedal or quadrupedal? I'd say quadrupedal. Okay. No, oh, Rusek was bipedal, right? I forget. Uh, he he liked to mix it up, okay. but uh, yeah. matters how how much he had to drink. I think. Yeah, I mean, because it doesn't matter. You could do bi or quad. It doesn't. I would it say it doesn't really matter. I'd say he has more of a preference for quad if he has to go bipedal he can but he yeah. wants to be quad most yeah and I think because when he's casting spells he will need his hands to cast spells but just walking around makes sense just to walk on all fours how tall are medium dragons when they're in all four mode I'm just trying to get an image in my brain because Rizzer say... was like six foot when he was up on two feet Right. Yeah, so he like, was, yeah, so foot height, you're looking at about probably four seven, four eight at top of head, full crane, probably pushing a halfway, depending on height of dragon. That's based on Rizzerk math. I would I would probably say think of like a Saint Bernard. Okay. That would that Big would be my dog. guess. Okay. Big dog, long neck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mr. Vesuvius, I... Vesuviac. Vesuviac. Yes, Vesuviac. Pardon me. So what brings you to our... What brings you to our island? Are you a normal resident? I don't believe we've had the pleasure. I am not from here. I unfortunately was dropped here by my previous crew after they said that they didn't like my attitude. I am under orders from the god Saren Ray themselves to heal and try and repair things as best as I can. But unfortunately, due to this ritual that I had to go through to be this size and learn the healing magic I do know, I lost use of my wings. So I am in need of a boat to be able to actually travel and do the mission that this god wants me to do. I see. So you are a priest of Serenre, the goddess of fire and the sun. Yes. Interesting. Interesting to bring a magma dragon? Yes. That worships a fire goddess on a wooden ship. I promise not to cause fires on the ship. On purpose. Well, I would say that we are in need of a physiker on a a hospitaler, if you will, upon our, on our crew. So that, that would, that would fill a role. And he, the prince looks to sell. And I suppose that the Saren Ray is known as the goddess of fire and the sun, but also known as the goddess of healing and redemption as well. If, if my religion is uh, is correct? Is that is, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. He doesn't really look super happy talking about his relationship with Saren, right? Interesting. I see. You said your crew left you here upon Goldcrop due to your attitude. 
and you now find yourself looking for a new crew. If you wouldn't mind, what what particularly was it about your personality that your crew did not care for? Well, what ended up happening is that there was a bit of an internal struggle on the ship. One of the cabin mates happened to have relations with the captain's wife when we were at port a while back. It got discovered while I was on the ship with them, and I was the only person, of course, to say, maybe we should hear him out. Maybe we should give him a second chance and a way to redeem himself. And the uh, captain decided that after he pushed that cabin mate off the plank, uh, decided that he didn't want me questioning his authority and things like that, and uh, dropped me off on the closest island that they could find, instead of making me go onto the plank itself, as I told him, I can heal, but I can also kill, and I'm pretty sure I can take out a few of you on the way down. I see. Well, you do know that I myself will be captaining this crew, as um, Syl has requested. I will follow the orders that you provide me only because they are going to align with my own goals. The true person that I follow any orders from is Saren Ray. You don't seem pleased about that, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. It's a non-consensual union. Why stick with it, then? Because if I don't, then Saren Ray has a very special punishment planned for me because of what I did. So you're important enough for a goddess to take specific interest in you? That's that's pretty cool. Uh, call it what you want. I think it's more annoying than anything. Yeah. Are you... I mean, I don't want to question you. You you know your life, but are you sure that... I mean, dragons, sometimes they get a little self-important and not to generalize, but are you sure that she would really, like, smite you down? Maybe you could just try to leave. It... What I did ended up being a rather personal blow to them, and so... They made it very clear that if I did not do as they demanded, I would not be able to operate in any way that I would have liked. At least here I can at least still fight and do the things that I want to do, could still get treasure and and build up my hoard and build up my power. But, unfortunately, I have to heal people as well. I see. That could be annoying. Well, Saren Ray is known as one of the one of the stronger goddesses. So, I suppose you would not. It would do do best to not get on her bad side. She is worshipped all across the all of Galarian, from all the way far north, in the land. In the uh, realm of the Mammoth Lords, where she is known as Sister Cinder, to all the way down in the Moangi. So, she is she is quite powerful, and her faith is quite strong. So, I understand. I understand why you would not want to get on her bad side. And if she sees something in you and has put you on the path of redemption, then I suppose you should see that through. And perhaps... Perhaps you should... Um, it, would do, it would do you well to stick on that path and join us. I can assure you that there will be challenges along the way where your faith will be shook... Because these islands will pose a challenge, and you will at times question your faith. 
And this will be a test I'm sure she would appreciate and see where your true allegiance lies, whether that's within her faith or if it's within, or if she was wrong and and seeing the path of redemption within you. I could care less what her plans are for me. I'm here to settle a debt, nothing more. Hmm. It's a motivation we can understand. Frankly, much more than, you know, blind devotion. No offense, Prince. I'm sure it's it works well for you, it sounds like, but... No, no, by all means. If... I'm not one to question somebody's faith. And if somebody's faith is shook, so be it. So it's decided, then. Well... It's decided that we will take you into consideration just like everyone else very well are, where are you staying these days are you staying at the temple of many colors yes there's a uh, there's a room for Saren Ray uh, yes. followers there yes I see I should have known well if you if you happen to see the head of the temple prismatic Colby you can give him my Give him my, um, give him my good tidings. He is a dear friend of mine. It's always very helpful. I will make sure to let him know you said hello. Thank you. Uh, I'd say at this point, Vesuviak concludes that business is done and he gets up. <laughs> <laughs> and he just... With unprompted, nobody saying anything to him, he just walks out the door back into the waiting room. Yeah, if if uh, Vesuviak isn't stopped, he's just going to keep walking out. That was an interesting character, Sil. I don't um, quite know what to make of it. Like I said, I think uh, having a having a hospitaler upon upon the crew would be beneficial, but oh. I don't know if uh, <laughs> if you are quite ready for healers, somebody. Healers are always useful as long as you can count on them to heal you, preferably without, you know, an, a payment expected. Um, did, you, did you have somebody upon which that you uh, have to pay? We did. We, uh, I mean, I'll tell you about it later, but okay. it, you know... Well, I mean, clerics of Abadar, they li- they literally cannot cast their spells without payment. See, so. that's what I like about this guy. It's you know the the worshipy types. They they have these rules. It's all confusing. This guy seems straightforward. He's gonna heal us. It's what he's gonna do. He won't be happy about it. That'll be fine as long as he does his job. Hmm. All right. Uh, the last guy looks interesting. Would you, uh, would you find him if I can ask before I go get him? Well, let's just say that um, the warden put in a request. This is a, this is an individual who's caused some trouble in the past, but this is his last. This is his last chance. It's his third strike. This could potentially be his third strike. Let's put it this way. And if he could be very useful or could be very detrimental. So I'm doing this as a favor to the warden, but it's your, it's ultimately going to be your call. Yeah. Well, I don't know how I feel about the place of favors in a potentially world uh, impacting mission, but we'll, we'll see. Step back out. Uh, Zaba. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not even going to try your last name. You're clearly uh, the last one here. It's fair enough. Would you have be kind enough to unchain me? It's Dude. The, the, Difficult the, to move in tight quarters. I won't try nothing. The guard is like, "Do you want me to unchain him? Do you want me to come with you?" You've you've taken me weapons. I think we'll be fine. 
uh, you go ahead, unchain him. Uh, we're going to travel with him. We need to know hmm. he's not going to kill us the first chance he gets. Uh, a right. test of faith. A test of faith. I, I like you already. Well, I like my odds. And so is at this time, you know, flipping through the cards, shuffling them in place. All right. Let's, let's see him. And the guard grabs, unshack, unshackles the manacles, unshackles the clamps from his legs. All right. Well, there you go. If you, uh, if you need me, I'll be right here. I'll see you in a few minutes. Uh, Jerry, right? It's Gerald. Uh, Gerald, my apologies. You've taken such good care of me. Uh, as you approach the door, I think Syl will take the time to say, you know, you want to try something with me? We can fight it out, but you leave the prince alone. We're... Things are going to go bad. Uh, he's saying he's a little bit uh, delicate. He's important enough for you not to mess with. I, I ain't looking for no trouble. I'm here for your interview. It'll be fine. All right. In you go. I, I promise. So, Zaba will... He won't stand. He stays hunched and curled and will kind of crawl through the doorway, um, moving almost like a gorilla on like, his forearms and kind of oddly curved rear legs into the room with the prince awaiting him. And his eyes do genuinely glow with a red, fiery burn. Um, so it's probably very scary for the prince as he comes into the room unshackled without Syl in front of him. Yeah, Syl is very intentionally waiting a couple seconds and taking in the prince's reaction. Um, this may or may not be a test of the prince's mettle. How, how long have I been shackled and chained? Well, not too long. I think um, a couple probably days. Would have, would, well, I mean, you've been... You've been in you've been in the in the cell for a couple days, but I think you've been shackled for it, in this particular instance for a couple hours at least. Until, oh, okay. The, tri so the been trip pretty from the cell to the to the they've interview been pretty, room. Pretty lazy with their overall guardage of my my person. Well, I mean, it's a it's a fairly it's a fairly magically sealed magic, right? Um, so yeah, Zab will enter and he will stretch to his full height extending his arms far above his head and you'll see well how tall are the, is the roof in this room uh, it's it's the castle so i would say that the ceilings are fairly vaulted okay so i can i can get my full like 11 foot 6 oh, self yeah. extended All for right. sure um so yeah so I'll stretch and then uh yeah by the way give rumplank is a level 9 settlement so yeah, it's it's gonna have some magical protection. It's gonna have some height. Yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, he will stretch out on uh, upon entering, and then flourish into a very stately bow to the prince. Good afternoon, my lord. Well, Mister um, Otrov, Otrov, is that? That's, I am. Um, I am Zaba Allah. Baral Astak Ostrov Otrov. But you may know me as Zaba Otrov. Nice and easy. Yeah, that's. That'll be a lot. A lot easier for me, thank you. I. Let's just put it this way. Um, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have put you on the, on the guest list. I'm doing this as a favor to the warden. And you find yourself here because he saw it fit to give you another chance. I don't know what you've done. And I don't well, know... You, you see, this warden, he is a very stupid uh, man. Uh, uh, hold on. Hold on here. You interrupted me. Let me finish what I was going to say. I don't know what you've done. 
and I don't know how you've ma- manipulated my friend, but you are here because of his courtesy and because I have agreed to give him that favor. The decision will not be mine. The decision will be to my partner next to me. This is Syl. This will be my first mate. So. Syl, I smell them on you. The devils of Chaliax. You will make a fine first mate, I imagine. What do you know about Chaliax? Well, uh, you see, I'm not of this plane originally. I have climbed here. I have served in the armies of Garden. I have feasted at the table of Mistopheles. I was a ruler of an inner third ring before I realized the corruption was not just inherent, but spreading. So I crawled through a rift deep, deep within the abyss, clawing and wrenching myself until I find myself deep within the Chalaxian landscape. These foolish cultists, they think I am some sort of, you know, devil, one of their patrons, and they they worship me like fools. So I slay them, I take my independence fully, and I take a boat, and here we land. I'm not a bad man, I simply was wrong place, wrong time, you know. I get here, I go to check up on this this sailing organization, Iron Eels. As I'm standing there, Captain falls from roof. I am arrested for strike. It was not me, I am innocent man. Second strike, sure, I did, in fact, kill that man in the bar, but he deserved it, you know. He was a, a thief of joy. And then, you know, this third strike, I'd rather not talk about it right now, but I am good man, I... I can kill, I can fight, I breathe underwater. That's very nice on ship, no? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I am very tall, so I'm capable of fixing sails. Are you capable I, uh, of fitting on the ship? Well, it's, it's a big ship, no? Yeah, yeah. I am well acquainted with sailing. I brought a small vessel here from Shelly Axe myself. Only sunk twice and had to steal other small vessel. You you sunk a ship twice? Well, they were small, big waves, you know. I swim very well. So, you know, ship sinks. I swim, steal another small fishing vessel way out of breath. You know, tie them to a log that maybe float, throw in ocean, and uh, keep sailing until I find a, a nice island. You know, we're not, we're not really trying to kill people on, no, on our I'm mission. No, I'm not. I'm not saying I am out to kill people. Like, that was old me. You know, old me make poison, poison him well, laugh as children fell at parents' feet. But new me, you know, me on Galarian material plane, me a good guy. Me just looking for adventure, good time, you know, a bit of fun. You know, man the cannons. I yeah. Have I mentioned I am excellent at killing pretty much anything with heartbeat or otherwise? very big targets, so you know, wizards like stand behind me sometime. Sure. I mean, that that all sounds great. You sound like you're really good at stuff, but again, we're not we're not going out of our way to kill things. Are you oh, able not to saying... not kill things? Well, <laughs> if I, you know, if I, if me have to, you know, I can, I can try, but like, you know, there's this time where I was fighting, you know, fighting against the, uh, you know, Verosha, the Ophidian fucking douchebag harbinger of Abaddon. And, you know, he was like, no, spare my troops. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. If I kill them, their families will be very angry and, you know, I gain extra power. But, you know, this is new me. I'm good man. You know? How, how long have you been a good man? I- oh, you know, like three or four cycles now I sure I mean we've all done things you know we'd rather we hadn't 
Oh, I don't regret anything, you know. It was a choice, and then I realized, you know, maybe choice better. Go and do things for self instead of, you know, faceless, you know, you know, you know, Mistopheles, Lord of Eight, you know, all his, you know, merchant of soul business. You know, instead I go out and zob a nickname for himself. I'm happy for you that you've uh, broken free, I, I guess. That's, that's good. I thank you. Thank yeah. you. You seem to have broken free from a chain or two yourself. I don't know what you mean. I've never been... I, uh... Prince, do you want to talk to him? And I... I... <laughs> well... I... Oh, Mr. Otrov, I can see that you are a very passionate individual and that you are on your own mission. Let's just put it this way that we have a decision to make. And if, if if the choice is made that you should join us on our crew, then the warden will, will let you know. Prince, 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 we are already on the same crew. We have shared this conversation. I have revealed myself to you. In earnestness, you must not turn me away. I require no shelter. I'm too big for most always on boats, so I hang out on deck. I am a great watchman. I am great, you know, anchor repairman. I, uh, I am great at, you know, preventing boardy parties single-handedly with my massive weapon, which I would like back quite immediately. My back hole feels very empty without, you know, the javelins and the trident and, oh, you know, my sword and the other sword. Um, I would get these back upon joining of the crew, eh? Get them back when you need them. You are a harsh one, but I, uh, I like it. We will strike the concord. You know, you always hear you know, making deals with a devil, but uh, you ever tried making a deal with a demon? Well, Try to so... avoid deals. <laughs> well, let's call it uh, an accord, perchance. We, uh, an agreement. I will keep you alive. You sailed your ship, and if we're lucky, we kill some of those fucks from Chaliax, eh? Or, or not we kill. Don't we have grievously. To kill things. We grievously wound their vessel and leave them for other sailors to rescue. Or we avoid them entirely. I mean... Oh, you have not been on the seas for long, have you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Prince, I'm gonna... Me either. Yeah, I'm gonna walk this guy back. You don't, you don't mind, do you? No, that's... That's totally fine. Okay. It was a I, pleasure... The, the Prince wouldn't say totally... <laughs> Slip it into surfer mode, yeah. Yeah, it oh, was, yeah, man. It was a pleasure to meet you, Sir Prince, and he will give an enormous bow from his 11 foot 6 height all the way down before resuming his more crouched, kind of blobbish, toad like posture on three hands, and will follow Sill out. Yeah. We'll walk out and I'll take the chains from the guard. I've, I've got, I've got him. I mean, I'll pass him off to your, you know, buddies back at the prison. You can take a break. It, it is oh. not necessary. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, Syl's not putting the chains on. She, they just took him uh, to carry back with them. I am, uh, I am on your team now, as it said, you know. We'll see. Uh, as soon as we get outside, Syl's going to drop the manacles, take out the cards. Uh, again, they're cards. I don't know that they look menacing, but uh, and turn to this guy and say, I don't know how you know about me, but you keep that stuff to yourself. Nobody around here needs to know about Chelyax. 